or a pastor in this regard, so be here at Holt Baptist Church. And so if you have your Bibles tonight, I ask you if you would turn with me to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4. There is a verse here we want to expound upon. First Timothy chapter 4, I want to read the verse, we'll pray, and then we'll get into our short message this evening. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible says this, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And he says this in verse 13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Heavenly Father, we pray and we bow before you this evening. That's, uh, Father, a special service for us and for this young man here and the students at our school here. And we're thankful to have that ministry. We're thankful that you bless it. We're so thankful for, Father, the the teachers and the volunteers that work and uh, put a lot of time in. I'm thankful for my wife. Uh, that works uh, in, in the school. And Father, we're just thankful for the workers that you've raised up right here in our midst, but especially the students, Father, that we get to minister to and to see grow. And Father, we ask that you would uh, put a faith, a hedge of faith around their life, around their ministry, just around uh, what they're going to do, endeavor in. We ask that you would be with them, go with them, and give them a blessing and uh, watch over them. But tonight, be with us, be with this message. Father, be with me, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray that our hearts would be attentive again, once again, to your word. And I pray that we would allow the Holy Spirit to work and minister uh, in our lives. We thank you for the blessings that you have given us. We thank you for the blessing of being here uh, to listen to your word preach. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to say this before uh, we get into the introduction of the message. I had a quote here by uh, our, our president, Abraham Lincoln. He said this about success. He said, quote, I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everybody. Um, before James Garfield went into politics and become our 20th president in 1881, he taught at what is now Hiram College in Ohio. And the ambidextrous Garfield would amuse his students by writing on a chalkboard with both hands, uh, one in Greek and the other in Latin at the same time. Uh, It is said that on one occasion a father came to Garfield and complained that the academic course at the school was too long and uh, arduous, and asked if it could be shortened. Certainly, Garfield replied, but it all depends on what you want uh, to make of your young boy. When God wants to make an oak tree, he takes a hundred years, and when he wants to make a squash, he requires only two months. I thought that was a pretty neat quote. Let me say this uh, by introducing uh, this verse that we're going to look at and several others tonight. In a world filled with people looking for shortcuts to success and ways to avoid work, we are called by God to work patiently, diligently, and consistently. Patiently speaks of how you're to go about this work. Diligently speaks of the mode that you're to operate in. And then consistently speaks of the manner in your, the way and the manner you're to conduct yourself in when you work. Regardless of, uh, of, uh, of what those around us do, we have the responsibility as Christians to labor and to work hard. Uh, this is the only path to true success. There are no shortcuts in God's economy. We see here at the beginning And we notice uh, as you get older, as you grow older uh, and wiser, (laughs) you're supposed to, (laughs) you begin to realize that one area you have uh, the most control in is yourself. There are many variables, many things in your life where you might think you're in control, but you're not. And the a person that you're going to give the most account, uh, accountability or account to is yourself. Uh, Let me say this, if you will surrender... 
uh, yourself to God, your life will be different. The Bible calls it this way, that you are a peculiar people if you are a child of God. Uh, You will be blessed. Uh, It will be a life pleasing to God, and it will be an effective influence, and it will bring glory and honor to God. So a consistent, healthy relationship with God is a must to be truly successful. And it's important that we understand that and maintain that in our life as children of God. God's Word identifies four types of lives we should know and have activated if we are to have success in this life. The first one, we've read 1 Timothy, and the reason why is because it draws your attention to a man who is in his youth. And he says again in verse 12, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word and in conversation, in charity. Uh, And he says in spirit, in faith, in purity. And he doesn't want an individual to take advantage of you because of your youth or your inexperience. That happens in this world. That happened in the first, the first century that this was written in, and it's happened today. And uh, I noticed it when I was younger, maybe not as much when I've, I've gotten a little older, so that don't happen. I guess sometimes it might. But as you're young and you're just starting out in life, uh, you'll find that somebody somewhere will want to take advantage of your youth. The Bible warns you against that. And he says, look, here's some reasons or some ways. Here's a formula to keep somebody taking advantage of your youth. And he says, you're to be an example to the believers. Uh, He says, in your word, in your conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And it's a life verse. And so uh, we'll start with that. But I want to get into, first of all, First, you need to realize in Romans chapter 8 is that the first life that we need to activate is understanding that you uh, and I have special lives. We have special lives, and they're found in Christ. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, notice with me in verse 16. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, the Bible says this, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And he goes on to say in verse 17, If children, uh, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs with Christ. Uh, That Sometimes it's kind of amazing just to get your mind wrapped around that you are joint heirs and I are joint heirs with Christ. Christ is the only begotten of the Father. He is the Son of God. Well, when you become a child of God, uh, you become joint heirs with Christ. And it goes on to say in verse 17, If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And I want to first to realize that you have a special life in God. It is special. The Bible goes on to say this, and it's a verse that I quote quite often, and we should have it to memory. I think I do. It says, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's John chapter 1 and verse 12. You have a special life. A lot of times you get sidetracked in life because you forget that you have a special life. You might not think you're special. Uh, There might come a point in time where your mother or your father or your grandparents or whoever might not think you're special or your wife or your husband or your husband. But to God, you are special and your life is special to God. It means something to him. It means so much that he come to earth to identify with you and I. And he identified and that identification allowed him to become to become a substitute sacrifice for the whole human race to as many as received him. And to those that have received him, he gives them power to become a joint heir here with Christ. You have a special life. There is meaning, there is purpose in your life. And I can assure you there is a plan for your life. Now you can, you can adjust that plan. You can adjust God's plan. You can look at men in the Bible Moses adjusted God's plan. Jonah adjusted God's plan. Elijah adjusted God's plan. There's many things that you can do to 
to change or alter the plan that God might have for your life. If you, if you don't want much adjustment on the human side, you want things to run pretty smooth or leastways in the favor of God, do and follow God. Anybody's life is special. Even when you're drawn away into the world, you're enticed of your own flesh and your eyes and your own lust, uh, and it allures you away from God, the God you love, the God you say you would serve, it's still special. It's still special. And so we see this from the Word of God. But there's another life. Uh, Not only do we need to realize we have a special life, but in Romans, we're in Romans, let's use a verse again, move to the right with me to chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, look with me in verse 2. This life is a surrendered life. And you say, what what are we preaching on tonight? We're preaching on how to have a successful life. And you'll find that to have success in this life, you're going to want a life in Christ. Christ. You'll need a life in Christ. And so we see a special life as it's presented. Then we see, secondly, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, uh, there is a surrendered life that you must activate uh, in, in your conversation, in your lifestyle, uh, in whatever you endeavor in in your life. Now watch verse 2. And he says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, We see here that he doesn't want us to be conformed to the world. You say, why? Well, God is a jealous God. He wants you to be conformed to his to his dear son, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 and 29. And he said he goes about through your life to conform you to the image of his dear son. He wants you to be like your joint heir, that is Christ. He wants you to be like Christ, Christ Christ-like, a life in Christ. So if we want success, we understand that our life is special. It's important and it's valuable to God. But secondly, we realize that this life needs to be a surrendered life to God. The Bible goes on to say in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, it says this, I am crucified with Christ. You say, how how does this surrendering, how does this conforming happen? Well, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. Uh, And he says, who gave himself for me. So a surrendered life realizes, he sees, that there's going to be some discipline. There's going to be some sacrificing done on our part. You say, well, it's probably greater than I can do. I assure you, if God is uh, encouraging us, employing us, and commanding actually us to live a crucified life, a surrendered life, it's not too much. It's not too hard. It's just right. Because he says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And so we see here a surrendered life is one that is willing to, uh, to go in the direction that Christ has picked. And he says there, if we looked at uh, back at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he, he speaks of different types. He speaks of a good will. He speaks of an accepted will. And he speaks of a perfect will. And so you can break that down, that'll preach, but uh, let's move on. In Romans chapter 6, speaking of a surrendered life, Romans chapter 6, we're there. Let's turn back to the left and look at uh, verse 11. Let's uh, read a couple verses here. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, and he says here, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Uh, We're still on this surrendered life. How does this happen? He says, Indeed, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Now watch verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto sin. Say it with me, God, as, the, as those that are alive from the dead, uh, it's kind of like coming back from the dead and live as God wants you to live in your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. You say, what are you, what is my instruments? That it will be your gates, your ears, your eyes, your mouth, your mind, your conscience. What God is giving you ability and talent, he wants you to yield to him. This speaks of a surrendered life. 
The Bible goes on to say in the Gospels in Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, he says this, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. This speaks of the heart mindset or the heart motive in an individual who wants to have a successful life. So we see that not only do we have a special life and a surrendered life, but thirdly, we're in Romans. You say, man, you're really tearing up Romans. It just happened to work that way. Romans chapter 8, and let's look at another one here. I want to look at verse 14 in Romans chapter 8. And I want to look at a spiritual life. This will be the third one that you want to activate. A spiritual life. Romans chapter 8. Now notice what he says here in verse 14, or scripture says. He says, for as many as are led by the, say it with me, Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You say, what is it saying there? Well, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That Spirit there is capitalized. It's speaking of the Holy Spirit. It's an individual. And so you say, what are you saying? I'm saying not only a surrendered life you will need to, to submit to, but you'll need to activate and submit to a spiritual life. You will need discipline in your life uh, on a spiritual level. It doesn't matter what you end up doing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you could go, you can do a number of things. I won't mention. <laughs> I mean, I, my mind goes crazy. There's a lot you can get yourself into today and work at. And you can work well at. But you will need to maintain to have a successful life is a spiritualness about you in, in the mode of the Holy Spirit. And when you walk away from that, you walk away from success that can be connected to your life. And so we see a spiritual life is important. If you would turn with me to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll give you one more verse on this spiritual life, Ephesians. Well, I got to get my Bible to turn to the right place. Ephesians chapter 3. Notice with me in verses 16, Ephesians chapter 3. He says here that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in, say it with me, the inner man. All right, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded, what's he say there? In love. You say, wow, this spiritual life that definitely needs to be in your life, needs to be activated, needs to be put in action, all right, is definitely rooted in love and it comes from God and it's by, uh, it says it's here, it's by faith. And this is important. You say, how do I do that? Well, it takes, it takes some discipline. It takes what uh, is called relationship building. And you'll need a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. That comes through the Word of God. You see, if you bless God through listening to His Word, uh, He will bless you. He will feed you spiritually. Your spiritual food will come from what God has left, you and I, and the whole world. And it's his word. And so we see a spiritual life is important if we're going about to have a successful life. But notice something. We're in Ephesians. Move back to the right to Colossians. Just right there in the neighborhood in Colossians chapter 3. I want to notice a fourth life that we need to understand. And I kind of have, have already got into it. But in Colossians chapter 3, look with me in verse 16. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says this, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. All right, so we see here a scriptural life. Uh, you'll need a scriptural life. Not only a surrendered life, not only a spiritual life, but you'll need a, script, a scriptural life. Yeah, the Bible goes and says this, 
uh, if you want to turn, you, you can. I have them here in front of me. Psalms chapter 119. Psalms 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. Psalms 119. There's a, uh, three verses there I want to look at. Psalms 119. Uh, notice with me in verse 11. This is going to speak on the scriptural life. Everything that you will base as a minister or a preacher or whatever you find yourself in. I was a small business owner for, for some, quite some time. Um, and so you say, well, did the, was the Bible, re- was scriptural life relevant? Very much so. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, I think I had, it was... Some of the jobs you would get on, they're, they're, they can be very stressful. And to, to run them and to work on them, and owner-operator type thing, those that run a business know exactly what I'm talking about. And you say a prayer. It's not really a Hail Mary prayer, prayer, prayer but it's close. Every morning when you get up, Brother Tim, you're here tonight. It's good to see you. He runs some trucks across the road. You're going to say some prayers. You're going to say some prayers to get where you need to go, and hopefully you get there in one piece, and you're going to pray on the way back. On construction, you have individuals to deal with. you got budgeting to deal with. you got work that needs to be done. You have a timeline to work with. You have other subs that are just, we'll just leave it at that. You have other subs, <laughs> those that work in the construction field. They can be nasty. They can be very nice, too. But it offers up a prayer every morning and through the day. God, get me through this meeting. God, get me through this. God, can you help me with this phone call I'm getting ready to make? It's all bathed in prayer, and it comes from the Word of God. And I'm going to share a couple verses here in Psalms 119. If you found your place, Psalms 119, look at verse 11. It's got, it's, it has a number, uh, hundreds of verses, but look Look at verse 11. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. If we have the word, and I believe we do, uh, I don't think the Bible lies here. This would be be a theological impossibility if we did not have God's word. You've got to be careful which which side of the fence you're going to fall on. I have to stand on the side that we do have God's word. And he says here, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not, say it with me, sin against thee. Now you're there in 119, fast forward to verse 97. We'll read verse 97. And we'll read on through verse 100, but watch verse 97. We're dealing with this spiritual or scriptural life. And it goes along with a spiritual life. But watch this. He says in verse 97, Oh, how uh, love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 98, uh, thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. You want an edge on your competitors? You want an edge on people you're dealing with in business? You want an edge on ministry? The edge is going to be a scriptural life. It's going to have a relationship not only with the Holy Spirit, uh, through the Holy Spirit, through God, but you're going to have a scriptural life, and it needs to be activated. He goes on to say, therefore, they are ever with me. You'll find as you get older, they are ever with you. And he goes on to say in verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. This was a man who knew something about humility. And if you have humility, you can keep some things going in your young life as you move through it, is you'll need humility. The next thing is you need to learn how to and listen and pay attention. Uh, this man did. And so he says here, for thy testimonies are my meditation. He's meditating. He's thinking. Uh, and so he writes down, verse 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So if you want a successful life, you're going to need a scriptural life. And you need to be willing to keep God's precepts. You say, what are those? Right here. They're right here. God has them. God is not going to leave you uh, inadequately capable. He says in Timothy to the young pastor, he says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works or to every good work. And that's what he's speaking of. You're thoroughly furnished. It's whether if we want to use what we've been furnished with. I'm saying a scriptural life is going to be one of those things you'll want to activate. Let me say by ending, now we're in Psalms 119, one more time in verse 112. I have inclined mine heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. You say that, speak, that speaks of dedication, that speaks of commitment. And you're going to need both of those 
principles, biblical principles in your life. Uh, you're going to want to incline your heart to the ways of God. There are going to be times when your heart is going to want to move away from the things of God because it's going to be lucrative. It's going to be easier. It's going to be more alluring to you in your life and what you have going on. You say, what do I do? Well, if you have an activated scriptural life and you have an activated spiritual life and you understand that your life is very, very much important to God, you're going to go to God and you're going to ask, God, I need help making a decision. I want to make the right one. I know what, which one looks the best right now, but what is your will? And ask God to bring you through that decision making. And he says here, I've inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. Now I want to leave you with my life verse. And so it's found in Joshua. We'll finish this here. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This is the verse uh, that is committed to my life. And he says this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. I love that verse because... I kind of, I look at the individual uh, who, who thinks or comes up with these ideals that we don't have God's word. Then how am I able to get to this point in my life where the book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth? How is that to happen for me if we don't have God's word? I believe we do. And we're reading it tonight. And it goes on to say in that verse, verse 8 in Joshua chapter 1, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Not some of it, not part of it, not the stuff I like, but all of it, all of it. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's the only verse in your Bible uh, that has the word success in it. Let me say this. You will need a consistent healthy relationship with God to be truly successful in this world. Let's all stand tonight. It's kind of a charge to those that are graduating, but I want to say this. You ask yourself, how do I have or how can I have a successful life in the world that I live in? You need a life in Christ, and it's found through His Scriptures. It's empowered by the Holy Spirit, and all you have to do is yield to it and say, I need that, I want that, I want that success, I want God's success in my life. Hopefully that's spoken with you tonight, and it will have a song of invitation. If God has spoken, this is a time of invitation. I ask Brother Jeff and uh, Miss uh, Leah to come and play just a, a song there, find a song. But tonight, I'm glad you've come out. Uh, these young men and these young students here, there's uh, quite a few of them here tonight. Listen, you've got a whole life ahead of you. You can go about it a hard way. There is a hard way. The Bible says it this way. There's a way that seemeth right into a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It's hard. The Bible goes on to say about an individual who has that type of heart, who just likes it hard. It says the way of the transgressor is hard. People who are successful godly people who are successful are willing to activate these lives uh, in their family, in their job, in their character. Their whole makeup is going to consist around these four lives tonight. Hopefully God's spoken to you. You say, well, it's too late for me. It's never too late. Not when you're dealing with the God that we serve and love. It's never too late. Never. What are we saying, Brother Tim? 308. 308, let's sing out this song. All 